Sheriff Ken Mascara. I'm Sergeant Rid Zerkowski. With the holiday season right around the corner, we thought this would be a great time to highlight some holiday safety tips. So on this episode of 10A, we're going to provide you some crime prevention tips to help keep you, your family, and your property safe. So don't go away. We'll be right back. And happy holidays. Welcome back to 10-8. I'm outside of the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office Courthouse Annex in St. Lucie West where the Sheriff's Office Crime Prevention Unit is located. Today members of the Crime Prevention Unit will show us how to prevent crimes before they happen. Now this time of year is always a busy time and soon we'll be heading out to the malls and stores to do our holiday shopping. And to that, the yearly influx of seasonal residents and tourists and you have a perfect set of circumstances for criminals to commit crimes of opportunity. Most of these crimes can be prevented with just a little bit of caution and common sense. We spoke to Deputy Hoffman of the Crime Prevention Unit about how to protect yourself during this busy time of year. During the holiday season, we, we see an increase of crime, and that's due to a lot of residents that come to our area for vacationing or coming down to visit relatives and so forth. Uh, they, they go shopping, they have a lot of money on them, they're not aware of their surroundings, they're looking for the best deals, uh, they're putting packages inside their vehicle, they're in plain view, and we see an increase of car burglaries and, and those type of thefts during this time. When you arrive at the store or the mall where you're going shopping, we always recommend that you go during the daytime. Um, if you can't go during the daytime, uh, go in and you have to go in the evening, bring a friend with you, uh, if, you have, if you can. A neighbor, uh, you, a family member, but bring somebody with you. It's, it's always better to go shopping as a team. Uh, you want to park in a well-lit area. If there's a light burned out and it's right near the front of the store, go to the nether entrance where the lighting is better. I don't park in an area that's dark. When you pull into a parking lot, the best place to park is near the front of the store. The worst place to park is on the side of the store. And the reason why that is, uh, there's a lot of, there not, might not be a lot of traffic on the side of the store. There might be other vehicles such as semis that uh, obstructs the view so you can't be seen as well. Lighting might not be as well on the side of the building as it is um, towards the front of the store. And also, if you go in that uh, side door, you don't know if it's going to be open when it's time for you to leave, so you'll have to walk all the way around uh, the building to uh, get back to your vehicle. When you pull into the parking lot, whether it's during the daytime or the nighttime, the things you want to do is always park closest to the store if possible. Um, when you pull into your parking spot, before you get out of your car, get all your items together that you're going to carry out, whether your purse, your wallet, whatever it might be. Uh, get out of the vehicle, make sure your vehicle's locked. Uh, scan the parking lot as you walk into the store. Always uh, project yourself as you have good posture. Um, look confident as you're walking and scanning the parking lot at the same time. Once you're inside the store, you always want to be aware of your surroundings and what's going on with you um, because you never know somebody might uh, try to do some type of distraction theft, uh, whether they might bump into you and try to steal your purse, somebody might uh, come up to you and start asking you questions. You might be looking at an item and they'll start talking to you about it and while you're doing that somebody, other, somebody else can come up and actually go into the purse and, and uh, steal their wallet, checkbook and so forth. And not only inside the store uh, but even at gas stations uh, distraction thefts take place. Uh, a lot of times when you're getting you get to get out of the car and you're, you're pumping the gas, somebody might start talking to you at the gas pump and you might have your purse laying on the front seat of the vehicle uh, and they reach inside and grab the purse and they uh, take off with it. When you come out of the store, you want to make sure you have your hands empty. Don't be carrying all your packages. If you have a shopping cart, make sure they're all in the shopping cart as you're pushing them out. Uh, you get to, the, uh, to your vehicle, as you're scanning the parking lot as you're approaching your vehicle, you have your keys in your hand. Uh, once you get to your vehicle, open up the trunk and place the va your valuables inside the, uh, the trunk of the vehicle. This way they're out of plain view. Uh, that removes the opportunity for somebody to, to come and steal them out of the vehicle. Uh, if you decide you have to go back into the store, um, move your car to another destination, into the parking lot. And the reason why that is, is because somebody might be watching in the parking lot and once you place your valuables inside the car, inside the trunk, 
Uh, a trunk is not a secure area, it just puts it out of sight. It's just as easy to break in the trunk as it is uh, through the compartment area. Uh, we've seen this happen where, where items have been stolen out of the vehicle's trunk because somebody was watching in the parking lot and uh, they, they've watched you put your items in there and then go back inside the store. If you see something suspicious, the very first thing you need to do is you call 911 uh, to report either suspicious person in the parking lot, suspicious vehicle, even when you're inside the store, if you see somebody that doesn't look right, notify security of the store. Uh, if you have a cell phone, call 911 and report that information. Most people don't realize by calling 911 from a cell phone, you can either do that from a phone that's fully activated or an old cell phone that's been deactivated. In other words, if you have an old cell phone um, that you don't use anymore and you got new service, you can still call 911 from a cell phone that's deactivated. You can get cell phones from friends and family, you can get uh, old cell phones from law enforcement, uh, and there's other different types of programs that are out there to receive old cell phones. Thanks Deputy Hoffman, that's a lot of great information. When we come back we'll have some advice to help prevent your home from being burglarized if you're away for the holidays. But before we do, here is this episode's trivia question. Can you guess what percentage of all home burglaries that occurred during the first half of the year were in part of the home being left unlocked or showing no signs of forced entry? Would you guess 5%, 14%, or 23%? I'll give you the answer when we come back.